All right, so today is the 27th, right? Yes. 27th of August, 2015. And um, you've been on ketamine now at 200 milligrams for a little over an hour, you know? Yes. You know what we call people like you? Um, Very expensive date. That's yes. what we call people like you. It takes a lot of ketamine to do the job. What is interesting about his situation is that you remember now we couldn't get him up to you know we had trouble getting him up high enough he was very he could now he can handle it a lot better than he could before remember the dosing that we did before you only get up to 135 that's about as high as we could get before right. he went too far gone so anyway we didn't want to just argue at your cognitive function right now is that okay with you your mom's got a couple of questions for you go ahead mom Dan do you remember grandma's first name Evelyn that's right uh, do you what? remember what city she lives in Good. That's very good. Now, do you know this uh, young lady over here? That's that's Tiffany. Okay. Hello. Yep. Tiffany's got a question. A couple questions, actually. Okay, let's do it. Dan, can I ask you a question? Yes. I noticed the doctor's wearing orange shoes. Dan, can I ask you a question? Yes. What did I just notice? That the doctor is wearing orange shoes. Very good. good. We know it's difficult to talk. Yeah. It's, it's like yeah. the, the cat got your tongue, right? All right. Uh, Tiff's got another question for you. Go ahead. Dan, can I ask you a question? Yes. I noticed that your mom was wearing a green hat. Can I ask you a question? Yes. What did I just notice about your mom? She was wearing a green hat. Okay, now I'm going to squeeze in here for a minute, and I want you to look at my finger. Look over toward me over here. Can you look? Over, turn your head toward me. Yeah. Daniel, over here. Look over this way. Turn your head this way a little bit. Now, follow my finger. Look up, 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 and over this way. Good, good, good. What we're looking for is that nystagmus, that jerking in his eyes. That's when the, when the ketamine gets up to a higher dose. Now, listen, I got a question for you, all right? Are you ready? I am. This is a tough one. You sure? You, I, don't wanna, I don't want to embarrass you. Are you ready? Uh, I'm, I'm ready. You ready? Show me the sign. <laughs> you got it you got it all right you nailed that one all right my okay so today is uh august 27 2015 and um you're into your this will be your third day on That's the right. ketamine, ketamine infusion right, right. Yes. and we just got him up to uh, 200 milligrams an hour for the last hour and he's being he he's requiring more and more ketamine to get the uh, the effect we want it's becoming more and more um accustomed to the ketamine effect so he's uh, he's we're having to increase the dose on him all right the reason for all this uh here daniel is he thought since you know you've been through four now this will be your fourth ketamine infusion over the last four years that it'd be a good idea to just kind of share with others from an educational standpoint what it's like you know having gone to depression so let's go back to his history just a little bit okay it was, it was 2002 that he had this head injury right and as a result of head injury, he got this pain that was particularly on his left upper back region, okay? Uh, but it was, it was diffuse. But associated with that, Mom, tell us about the depression type thing. What was that like? Because uh, you didn't have that before. Tell us how that came. No, he didn't have that before. And, uh, oh, by the way, me, I'm sorry to interrupt you. You're a nurse practitioner, so that's why I'm kind of picking on you a little bit more I than am. I do the average person. You're in the, you know, being in the health field, health field so... So go ahead and articulate what, right. what, how this is impacted. Um, after this injury, his pain certainly got a lot worse over the next year. Yeah. And with that increase in pain came depression, um, difficulty dealing with everyday life. And that seemed to get worse over time from 2002, 2003. Um, as the pain increased, the depression increased. It was hard for him to be social. It was hard for him to... Um, engage in the things that he had frequently found fun and pleasurable. Um, yeah, and, and so when depression, mild depression comes on, one of the characteristic features is this ability, or inability, I should say, to be socialized and enjoy. Right. And when it started, it was mild. Yeah, it yeah, was, It yeah. was mild for several years, but then over time it seemed to get more severe. Right. And that was one of the reasons that we sought to come here for ketamine, yeah. not just for pain, because he continued to be in pretty impressive neuropathic pain, but right. also to see if it could help with depression. Right. And, and and with regards to ketamine, you know, there are control studies now that show that it does work for um, depression, mm -hmm. okay? And, um, and what's different about 
the other treatments, whether you're talking electroconvulsive therapy or, or ECT or medication, the effects are almost immediate, okay? Immediate and long term. Whereas the other medicines that you take and the ECT, they can take months before right. you really see a, right. a therapeutic uh, right. benefit. And, and to treating on that, he, is, he had tried multiple antidepressants yeah. by mouth, um, never tried ECT, but multiple antidepressants, and none of them seemed to be particularly effective. They were, you know, slightly effective, but they were noth nothing like getting him back to normal or baseline. Okay, so you've been through the antidepressants, okay? Okay, yes. Daniel. So do you do you, do you tell us straight from your your recollection? Do you feel the ketamine is more effective than uh, than the than the medications? Oh, definitely, yes. So elaborate on that just a little bit. Uh, I I feel more in control. I feel. Like I'm not bossing myself around. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm thinking outside of the box. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt I'm, you, but you, you, you're still under the influence of ketamine. We just took you, we just grabbed you and took you out here. Yes. <laughs> Very much so, so. So if you're having trouble articulating your words, everybody will understand that. Okay. 200 milligrams is a pretty stiff dose of ketamine. So <laughs> you're doing good. I just want to. So if anybody's watching this video, they understand that one of the things that goes is speech. I mean, it's very hard to talk uh, when yes. you're coming out of ketamine. Yes. Okay. And as you know from your experience, having been, this is your fourth one, you know that uh, your speech will come back pretty quick. But it, right now, you're still under the influence. But I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Uh, yes, just being more open, and it, it feels like I'm more submersed in life basically do you think you're more sociable you enjoy being around people more yes yeah. definitely right right okay and um so um uh so we said that you know he doesn't have the clinical features to support the diagnosis of rsd okay but he does have a kind of a neuropathic type pain component to explain the pain in his back and so forth right so the, I think one of the uh, take-home messages here is when you get a patient that doesn't fit the criteria for RSD and has pain, you can help patients like that, even if it's for treating depression, because depression is major. In fact, in some ways, you can think of it being worse than RSD. To be like, it's like being in a dark room where the lights never come on. You never see any sunshine. Is that a pretty accurate description of what it's that, like to be depressed? That That is, yes. Yes, it is, yeah. And so that can be more torturous, if you will, than pain itself, right? Oh, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, so do you think, uh, having gone over the last four years through these once a year type, on average, uh, ketamine infusion, has it been worth it? Yes, definitely. All right, so let's be fair about it. Can you think of anything about the treatment itself that you particularly didn't like? Anything? Um, Besides, you have to travel all the way down from Gainesville, which isn't exactly next door, you know, you know, type thing. Nothing's really coming. To, no. Coming to my. Yeah. Coming to my mind. Right, 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 right. How about you, Mom? Did you did you notice anything on the negative side uh, from having the ketamine? Uh, short term or long term, I haven't noticed any yeah, yeah, negatives. Right. But what's interesting is that the positive effect on depression is very very quick it happens during treatment it doesn't happen after you leave it happens during treatment mm -hmm. you notice it right away you dan you noticed it day one you said that you felt healthier and happier yes that was a quote he said i feel healthier and happier right on, on the first day maybe after the first right hour of the infusion. right and the way many people that have gone through this with regards to we treat depression here you know intractable depression uh, they don't have RSD, but we've treat. We've, he's not the first one, and what the way the patients describe it, and it's, I think it's fairly accurate. They said like you got a brain up there; it's a computer, and basically you just did a reboot on the computer. You erased all those things that perpetuate that sense of hopelessness. Those yeah. those thoughts get erased. Is that is that a pretty accurate thing? Yeah. It's like a, it's, yeah, and and that's what happens. I mean, as you know, when you give ketamine, things just reset. shut down. Yeah, they reset. reset. It's a reset on the reset button, like just like when you're doing your computer. Um, you're awake, but your but your brain is all scrambled up like eggs. You know, I guess that's where the word egghead came from. Maybe you think. <laughs> okay. Any uh, so if you don't have anything negative to think about, I don't either. So uh, I guess it just points to how safe this is. 
Well, he's never experienced any adverse effects. His vital signs have been rock right. solid, stable. Right, that's he's true. Been able to that's true to answer questions during the the, the treatments. Right. Um, he's never had any adverse effects. Right. He's been monitored, of right. course, by you and your staff very closely and carefully. Right. Right. And that's always been. I wouldn't say predictable, but he's always done very, very well. Right. Now, I'm going to hit you with some kind of uh, blindsided here with a question, okay? Now, you yes. know, which actually is kind of a take on what your your mom was just talking about. You know, we do insist that that's a significant person who you know and you trust be in the room. This happens to be your mom. Did that, did that, does that impact on the quality? Does that end on, uh, impact on your ability to get through the ketamine infusion? In other words, uh, we, could put one of my, we could put one of my staff in there, but with you alone. You know, as opposed to having somebody that you, that's very familiar. Oh, having my mother there was um, the best, I believe. Yeah, because everybody else becomes strangers because your short-term memory goes temporarily. Yes. And it can be kind of scary if you if you know what I mean. And that's when we've had adverse hallucinations with ketamine. That's when it happens. It happens when they're when they don't have somebody in the room mm -hmm. who they know and they trust. Mm -hmm. Okay, it gets it can get scary, and that kind of sets them off. Okay, very good. Well, thanks very much, folks, for sharing this, this uh, important information. Appreciate it. Yes. Oh, do you have anything else that you wanted to bring up uh, from your experience? I want to make sure. Uh, this was it, really. Okay, perfect. All right.